Hello, this is Texas PK, and welcome to another installment of Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at how redstone components work to where it's not only easier to build, but to understand different redstone contraptions. Today we're going to be taking a look at monostable circuits, both rising and falling edge circuits. Uh, these are important for a lot of more complicated redstone builds, uh, things like 3x3 three three and larger piston doors, and other contraptions that use multiple types of redstone circuits to make them work. So let's get started and I'll show you how they work. So as we get started, let's begin first with understanding what a monostable circuit is and why you might want to use it. Basically what they do is they take a redstone signal, whether it's an input from a, a lever or a button or any other input signal, whether it be comparators or any of the other types of things you might get, and turn them into a single short pulse. And you'd use one any time you need to know when to activate either a piston or a dispenser or any other more complicated device that just wants to know when to start operation as opposed to having a continuous signal. And that's particularly helpful when things are needing precise timing and order of operations. Now, there are two types of monostable circuits. The first being a rising edge and the second being a falling edge. And while those terms might seem a little confusing at first, they really are just referring to when the output signal is sent in relationship to when the input signal is sent. Let's begin with looking at the rising edge monostable circuit. It's really simple to build. There is an input signal, a piece of redstone dust, a piston with a gravity block on top, a repeater coming out of that block, and the output circuit. We're going to be using redstone lamps to indicate the signal going to the output and the signal coming in from the input. As a side note, if you don't want to use a regular piston and a gravity block like sand or gravel, you can also use a sticky piston and any solid block of your choice. They will work just as well. I just prefer to use a standard piston and a gravity block like gravel. But it's really a matter of preference. It's up to you which one you want to use. So let's demonstrate how it works. When the input signal is on, the piston is extended in the block is pushed upward. When it's turned off, the piston retracts and the gravity block falls. Now when the signal comes back on, notice what the output lamp does. You see it activates as the input signal turns on, but it does nothing when the signal is removed. This creates a simple pulse on the rising edge or the beginning of the input signal as opposed to the end of the signal when it's turning off. That's all it means when we say rising or falling edge monostable circuit. Now the falling edge is a little more complicated to do. You'll notice it has a redstone torch coming off of the input of the signal, a sticky piston attached to a redstone block, which when it powered would extend next to this redstone dust, another piston with a gravity block, a repeater, and then the output circuit. Now the reason we have a redstone torch here is that it will invert the signal. When the input is on, you'll notice that the redstone torch is off, inverting the signal. When the signal is then turned off, this will be activated which will activate our sticky piston, pushing the redstone block next to this redstone dust, which will activate it, which then powers the block below it, activating this piston, pushing up the gravity block, and deactivating the circuit. So let's see it in action. When we turn it off, you notice the signal went through the output. But when we turn it on, there is no pulse on the output off, power is the signal, on, there is no signal. Now you might be asking why do we need to have this sticky piston with the redstone block for the falling edge where we didn't need one here on the rising edge. The reason is that this redstone torch inverting the signal creates a slight delay 
and the piston is activated before the signal is able to get through the block to the repeater in the output circuit. I could demonstrate that really quick here. As you see, the delay never gives it an opportunity for the signal to pass through the block into the repeater. And so the signal never goes through the output. However, with a piston, there is no delay in the extending of the redstone block. And so it's able to transmit the pulse before the piston is extended. And that's how monostable circuits work, both rising and falling edge. There are other designs out there. These are probably the simplest ones, and they teach the concept of how they work. So if you run into a different design, you'll understand how and why they work. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and it helps you out, and you can put it to use somewhere in your world. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave a comment down below letting us know how you used it. But on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye.